You guys are so ugly. Sorry, but I'll have to end you both. Today, we'll tell you about the history of Rome, the legend of Romulus and Remus. In the 8th century BC, there was a place called Alba Longa. There, King Numitor was the king. One day, his brother Amulius got bored of not being king, so he overthrew him, killed all his sons, caught her daughter Sylvia, and did not kill her. But he did force her to join a cult and serve goddess Vesta as a virgin priestess so that she would bear no children who could potentially grow to avenge their grandfather, Numitor. That's why Sylvia didn't have a son. She had two. Because Ares, the god of war, aka Mars, showed up in the sacred fire to have children with her. Against her will. Because Greco-Roman gods didn't care about human consent. And now they are cancelled. Sylvia had twins, Romulus and Remus. This annoyed Amulius, because his plans were not going according to plans. For this reason, he imprisoned Sylvia even more, and grabbed a basket, put the babies in it, threw them to the river, and they didn't drown. The basket floated to the shore by the Palatine Hill, where a shepherd found them and adopted them. Um, nope. That's, like, too boring for a Roman myth. Okay. Then, a she-wolf called Luperca, that for some reason had a name, took care of them for a while. Until a shepherd named Faustulus adopted them. Romulus and Remus grew up, and one day, they got into a big fight that had absolutely nothing to do with them. So Remus was sent to jail. And he was taken to ex-King Numitor, who turned out to still be alive. And when they saw each other, suddenly, they realized that Romulus and Remus were his grandsons. I am your grandpa. So Romulus and Remus helped their grandpa regain the throne by killing King Amulius and rethroning him. All this made Romulus and Remus feel like ruling something. But since they didn't want to overthrow Numitor again, they went looking for their own city to rule. Romulus wanted to found Rome on the Palatine Hill, and Remus wanted to found Remoria on the Aventine Hill. And since they couldn't make up their minds, they decided that the best course of action was bird watching. Oh, I know. Whoever sees the most vultures wins. And Romulus won. So subscribe or something. Romulus began to build a wall around the city to protect it from- This wall is not that high, so Romulus had to kill him and buried him where Remus wanted to build Remoria. And that's how Romulus founded Rome on April 21 of the year 753 BC and became the first king of Rome. And we have no idea if any of this is true. Actually, there is no archaeological evidence. But Livy thought this would be more exciting than telling people that Rome was formed from shepherds and farmers who gradually arrived to the Palatine Hill around the year 1000 BC. The Latins settled in this area because of its interesting location and fertile land. Then, they spread to the other mountains where they were influenced by the Etruscans and the Greeks, who also lived around here. But this is too boring, so we better go on. In an effort to bring more people to the city, Romulus invited criminals, slaves, and exiles to live in Rome. 
created laws and costumes, and appointed senators, who were called patricians. And the non-patricians were called plebeians. But they didn't have as many rights as patricians. Unfortunately, Rome didn't have women, and having children was an impossible task. That's why Romulus sent messengers to the other cities, to ask them to please send them women. But they said, Ew, nope. So Romulus organized some games in honor of Neptune, aka Poseidon, and invited people from those cities. And the Sabines and the Latins came with their daughters. And when everyone was vibing watching the games, the Romans kidnapped the women and forced them to marry them. The guests left very unsatisfied because kidnapping their women was totally not cool. Later, the Latins and the Sabines went to attack Rome. But when they arrived, the women seemed to have developed a collective Stockholm Syndrome and had fallen in love with their new husbands. So they stood up in the middle of the battle to stop their dads and their husbands from killing each other. And now they were all happy and just one people. This is known as the kidnapping of the Sabine women. Romulus and Titus, who was king of the Sabines, formed a diarchy, which is two kings ruling a single reign together. But Titus died. And now Romulus was the only king. Again. Romulus kept hustling, making alliances and conquering other cities. Which actually does sound realistic. Then, one day, when he was 54, Romulus was reviewing his army, when suddenly, a fog and a storm appeared, and Romulus was lifted up to the gods and disappeared. Either that, or he was killed by the senators. Because they were fed up with him. But anyway, they turned him into god Quirinus and worshipped him. Because Romans were very fond of venerating Greek gods that they had turned into Romans because they felt like it. Now, Rome was on its way to becoming a great city that would give way to a monarchy, that would give way to a republic, that would give way to an empire, that would give way to a country, that would give way to pizza.